in this episode, we will explore common words misunderstood by non-Filipinos and Filipinos alike. You see, compared to other monolingual culture groups, Filipinos from the Philippines need less of an adjustment when it comes to language. We're known to be bilingual around the world. And just like India, many Filipinos in the islands are employed in call centers. So when you call at t customer service, many who support your customer needs are actually from the islands. But here's the thing. When Filipinos migrate in the States, it sounds like we're navigating the American culture without a sweat. But we know that for many immigrant Filipinos, well-educated or not, doesn't really matter. The tone, the inflection, and some English words have different meanings for us. Are Filipinos truly bilingual? We use the same language at home, but speak and love languages foreign to each other, together but separated. Kamusta? I'm Rowan, licensed psychotherapist mom, immigrant twice, first-generation Pinay raising my mixed Filipino-American children in America. I found that after visiting 500 Filipino homes, I continued to be a student of the culture. In this podcast, we would be seatmates in this beautiful cultural classroom. And by the way, did I tell you I need my kaping barako straight from Batangas before each class? If you're interested in learning the deep intricacies of the Filipino culture, especially as it merged with American culture, talks about trauma-informed care and deepening your Filipino relationships across generations, which includes my fave topic, Pinoy Love Languages, you're in the right place. Welcome everyone to the Speak the Pinoy Love Language podcast. Again, this is Rowan. This is actually the first episode that I'm recording. I'm in my garden studio, as I like to call it. I'm a psychotherapist in private practice, so I see my clients here online or face-to-face. It's a garden studio because when you there's a garden, it's small, but there's lots of plants there. And I like it because uh, it doesn't have that sterile feel. It feels cozy. I want to just welcome you for being here, for lending me your ear. When I first worked in the States, my story is I'm an immigrant twice, but the second time I came back to America, I was 23 years old. And my second job was a preschool teacher. You see, we only had one car. So my brother and I live with an uncle for like about a year when we're still trying to get on our feet. And we would share this old Honda car. I think it's an 89. And my brother needed to be in his job at 5 a.m. And I had to be in my job at 10 a.m. So that wouldn't work out. My uncle would take me to work like three hours prior. One day, you know, preschool, my boss told me after this, for some people, it's just eight hours. It's like I've been there forever. It feels like it. Like I said, I was there three hours prior. So it was like 11 hours for me. Excited to finally be done with my shift. And then my boss said, okay, see you later. And I'm like, see you later? And I'm like, lady, I I need my break. Here's the first one, this word, see you later, right? Island translation, so Philippine translation, right? See you later is happening on the same day. And we hear this often, like, see you later, later. And so when I was this first Filipino immigrant, I got confused with that. And so the American translation is that it's soon, but it doesn't have to be the same day. So that's one word that's different is see you later. Now, another word, and I'll get to it in just um, a few seconds here, but I want to share a story. My first time I was an immigrant, I lived with my auntie. She was a single mom and working hard for her kids. One day we were in the car and, you know, after going to church, usually 
you look around for a restaurant to eat at. And so my auntie goes, where would you like to eat? Asking my male cousin. And he goes, I don't care. I'm thinking, what? I don't care. It struck me as, wow, how could he say, I don't care? So that was my immigrant definition. And here's why. One of the core values of Filipinos is what they call kagandahang loob, okay? When you say the word loob, loob has a, both a metaphysical component to it. Although in English, it simply means inside. But for the Filipino culture, it's more of an embodiment of your personhood. So there are a lot of words that has the word loob. Kagandahang loob. That means being kind towards others, which is one of the Filipino core values. There is utang na loob, debt of reciprocity. There is malakasang loob. Like if you're persistent, if you just you know take on something new, one might say malakasang loob. And then the opposite of that, mahina ang loob is like when you're too scared to start something new, they say mahina ang loob. So you see. When you translate that in English, it just sounds like inside, but it's actually because we don't have a direct translation, we say inside. But in totality for the Filipino culture, that's the person's personhood. It even embodies like people that have or generations prior to you. It's like a, a reflection of that. So going back to I don't care, children are taught uh, to care about the other. That's why kagandang loob, kindness. That's something that's highlighted. So rather than a setting boundary, which is highlighted in the Western culture, that's not a bad thing. Sharing is highlighted in the Philippines, right? So when there are two kids that are maybe fighting for the same toy, usually in the American culture, the adult would say, well, wait your turn and then coach the child. Tell the other kid, you know, wait for your turn. In the Philippine culture, in general, we're always talking about general because we're talking about collective uh, expression. Obviously, we do have uh, individual differences. So for the Philippine uh, setting, you know, the adult might say, coach the child, oh, look at this other child. Look, she's, you know, really sad. Just share, share, you know, just share a knack, you know. So it's highlighting sharing and kindness. Not that we don't highlight that in the Western culture, in the American culture. But it's if there is a list of one to five more important characteristics that we teach our children, that's like one top three for the Filipino culture. So tending to the other, and very, we're very collect collectivistic, right? And when we say, walang pakailam, that's frowned upon. So when you say walang pakailam, it's like you don't care. So going back, the word I don't care sounds like walang pakailam. It's like I don't care about you or, you know, making the preference. So Filipino moms might use this phrase. You know, like, walang pakailam. When she thinks she's done all she could and the child is still stubborn, and she would say, okay, wala na tayong pakailaman. Okay, let's just not care about each other. And usually, that's not exactly what she means, but it's telling the child, I've reached my edge and that you need to reel yourself back to me. Actually, the walang pakialam, the colloquially, we say walang pake. So that means someone who doesn't care. So you can understand my lens as an immigrant, and this would help you. This is why I'm sharing it, is that just by reflex, oh, wow, my cousin, he said walang pakialam, like I don't care. So island translation, when you say that, when you don't care, it's a choice that you don't want to put any more effort or time on something because you don't value it. Filipinos in the islands don't respond by saying, if you ask someone for their preference, they don't say, I don't care. That just sounds uh, like maybe an insult to the other person. 
usually they'll say it's up to you, which is the I don't care in the American translation is usually that. It's like, it's up to you. I, in retrospect, thank goodness I was able to pick that up because, you know, just being more self-aware is really key. I picked it up that, oh, in the American translation, I don't care. is actually, I trust you to make a decision for me. See how these cultural interpretations can really help us all navigate our relationships better? Here's another one. It's called Bahala Na, or when we translate it in English, it's, it's up to you. So the context, okay, is asking dad to go out with a friend. Hey, dad, I need to go out to my, I wanted to go out with my friends, watch a movie. And then initially dad said, no, right? So you ask over and over and over again, hoping that his first decision will be revoked. And then when the parent eventually blurs out, ay nako, bahala ka na, it's up to you. Like, do what you want, right? There are two possible things. It's possible, first, that you've convinced your parent successfully. And this can happen when the tone can sound like this. O sige, anak, bahala ka na. And may end up with a hug or an exchange of affection because you're like, oh, thanks, mom. So this usually occurs when you have a pretty much a good foundation for your relationship. But if this is not the case and the bahala na sounds like this, ay nako, bahala ka na nga. With that tone, you have not successfully convinced your parent to revoke their decision, but rather the parent is actually testing you that they honor, that you honor their first respond. And if you misunderstand and went on with your plans anyway, expect a psychological consequence because it's like asking someone, can I drink this hot tea? And they said no many times and you did it anyway. So when you come home, expect them to serve you, not the hot tea a boiling tea and ask you, you like tea, right? Giving you a taste of your own medicine. Sounds harsh? Before we keep going, and we'll talk more about misunderstood words, because much of the Filipino expression is non-verbal, your rebellion, right? You didn't follow the first decision, you didn't honor it, is also met with rebellion. So the island Island translation for bahala and is, is up to you. It's like basically my recommendation is don't do it. It's, the, it's uh, basically telling you, okay, I told you so many times to not drink that hot tea. That you'll be sorry when you come home, you'll have to drink a boiling tea. And in the American translation, it means if you say bahala, kana, okay, well, I changed my mind and do as you please. So coming up next, one of the most misunderstood words used in the Filipino-American lexicon. But before that, let's go on a quick commercial break. Jen ka lang. If you think someone else would benefit from listening to this podcast or specifically this episode, please share. Sharing is caring. Information is meant to be shared in communal spaces, especially those that are meant to connect and to encourage healing. So let's keep going. The next word or phrase is I'm sorry. I used to do a lot of home visits in Filipino household, lots and lots. And you hear this often. I'll say it in English first and say it in the native uh, language. People would always say when they come inside their home, I'm sorry, this is all we could offer you. Or I'm sorry, our house is small. So for the novice eye, it might sound like they're apologizing. But when you translate it, it's more this way. Pasensya ka na, maliit lang yung bahay namin. O pasensya ka na, ito lang ang nahanda ko. So it's the same phrase that I mentioned earlier. So for some people, they say, oh, okay, well, that's a problem. You know, like being too humble sounds like, you know, some people might say interpret that as having low self-esteem 
And it could be very well be, but because we hear this a lot of times, even for, you know, like Filipino Americans, like, oh, stop apologizing. The truth is, there is no direct translation for the word, and there is a range. Pasensya ka na is not really saying you're sorry, but Filipino immigrants would have to use the word I'm sorry because there's no direct translation. So it sounds like I'm sorry, and usually people would say, oh, you don't have to be sorry. So going back to that scene, right? People, like if it's uh, like a potluck or a fiesta, I'm sure you probably had this uh, experience where someone prepared an elaborate meal. They have kare-kare, sinigang, there's cake. You know they've prepared well, and they continue to say, pasensya na, I'm sorry, this is all we prepared. So actually, it's a humbling down to verify if the experience is good enough. It's asking for a confirmation, especially when one knows they've prepared well, right? So it's actually asking you to affirm that this is good enough because they've done the best that they could and they know it. And so when we misunderstood, we think, oh, you don't have to be sorry. But the response that they need is to confirm that you notice their effort. You see the difference? It's actually a huge difference. Sometimes, pasensya na may actually be an apology. It could be. But it's mainly due to the discomfort brought to the other. Without the recognition of any wrongdoing, you're not saying, I'm going to change. But you're uh, acknowledging, oh, I caused you discomfort. Pasensya na. Pasensya na. So island translation, there is, I said, a range for saying sorry. Pasensya ka na. Hindi ko sinasadya, I don't mean to. Patawarin mo ko. That's another range. That's more of like, really, I'm apologizing. Patawarin mo ko, I apologize. So that's another word. I'm sorry. By the way, this episode is brought to you by the free webinar, Speak the Pinoy Love Language. Come join that webinar. It's free. You get instant access and you can watch it whenever you're available. The link is in the episode notes. So let's recap why this is important to learn because you might be talking to a loved one, saying the exact same words and phrases, but we're meaning different things, right? So today we talk about the word I'm sorry or it's up to you. We also talk about I don't care and I think see you later and how that's different in the way we use it. I hope you found... um, this episode helpful. And remember, it's like describing colors of an artwork. But when two artists are working with different types of brushes, therefore creating different pictures, we might be talking about similar things, but they're still different. So curiosity and self-awareness is key. If you'd like to read the blog version of this episode, uh, check out the link in the episode notes. And don't forget, again, to register for the free webinar, Speak the Pinoy Love Language. It's been great lending me your ear today. Salamat. If you have any questions, email me, comment at info at calamansijuice.com. All the links are in the episode notes. And also, help this podcast reach a lot more people by leaving a stellar review. Sa uulitin again, this is Froen. Until then, 